Hello YouTube, this is Hunter Surge of the Brawler Cafe, bringing you a quick news update Torino. Uh, I say this is quick, but every time I say that, the video is still ends up going for 10 minutes. But regardless, uh, this article was published by uh, ICV2, which if you don't know, is a site that publishes a lot of uh, TCG news. Uh, I know they do some other stuff, uh, like comics and stuff, but the main thing I know of, the, of them, the site for, is that they publish a lot of TCG news and they publish a lot of um, sales info on TCGs. Um, so yeah, uh, so uh, the thing of note in here is that there's an interview with uh, the lead TCG designer Justin Gary from the Gamma trade show last week. So uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here that we already know, um, but let's get into the new news. Um, talk about the TCG player, uh, partnership. Uh, so here's the big thing. So initial push was into mass. Now the team, now the team is really focused on getting the right kinds of SKUs and hobby storage support. For those who might not be super familiar with these terms, like SKU just means, it just means a product. Um, and hobby store just means locals. Um, so every time you say SKU, it's just going to mean product. And every time you see hobby store, it's just going to mean locals. Um, those are proper terms for those things. <laughs> um, so, uh, basically, uh, this is info on the locals stuff. So, basically, um, the big thing that we know about this art, we know now from this article, is, uh, okay, here's the big thing. Okay, so there's there's card pack SKUs and there's toy SKUs as well as single toy SKUs. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the card packs are already available and those will be the same across the board. We're trying to make toy SKUs that are really appropriate for hobby and that can support organized play as well. We need to figure out how to get SKUs that will be really functional for hobby channel that can let them buy toys as well as the cards. So basically, this is a big thing. Um, something a lot of people, including myself, have said from the start is, hey, if you're playing on local supporting, the sort of products you've got right now aren't really going to work terribly well at a local level like they're going to take up so much space um, a lot of them aren't desirable at all um, and like a bunch of them are just gonna sit on the shelf it's not as big of a problem when you've got a major retailer where people where there are going to be people coming in just for the toys but that's not really going to be the case with vocals nearly as much um, and like they're just smaller businesses in general so they can't really afford to have that stuff sitting around um, so it's really, really good to hear that there are going to be products specifically designed for locals, for LGSs. Um, and hopefully that, that also means like maybe there are some the LGS exclusive stuff, which would be great because like you, you really want to encourage people to be going into, um, into, into local stores, start playing and a uh, great way to get LGSs is to, to like your game and want to support it is if you're giving them exclusive stuff that the customers can't get at a big retailer. It helps them compete. Uh, lots of card games have done it before. Um, what else? Uh, there's one other thing. Uh, so how many cards in the first set? The first set has about 280 cards. Now that's a number not counting the character cards. Uh, we are going to plan about three card set releases uh, with about 200 cards each. Um, so this confirms what we basically already knew. There are going to be three sets released every year, uh, four months apart each, which is a larger gap than normal, but because of the toy releases in between, it works out. Now, here's the interesting part. The toys come with cards as well, so there will be an addition, uh, another 20 or 30 cards each season for toy card releases. Now, this is interesting because this clearly can't be talking about character cards because within Battle Brawlers alone, the first three waves, we have 90 character cards. And it can't refer to like the the cards that come in normal sets that get put into the toy packaging because, well, there's about 90 to 100 of those as well just within these first three waves. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit higher because of the, uh, of the diamonds. Um, well, no, actually a bit lower. It's probably like around 80, actually. I haven't actually done the math on that, but it's way higher than 20 to 30. I can tell you that much right off the bat. Um, way more than 20 to 30. 
Um, so that can't be referring to either of those things. So it's probably referring to uh, exclusive cards of some sort that will only come with certain toy packaging. Now, this makes me all the more concerned about the Maximus Dragonoid thing, because I don't think we've gotten confirmation that Maximus Dragonoid is going to be in the set. And this right here is basically outright stating, hey, there are going to be cards that are exclusive to toy releases. And I'm like, is Maximus Dragonoid gonna be one of those? <laughs> are we doing this? Um, I don't mind this in general. Especially if the cards aren't super high quality, aren't super essential, and if or if they're like packaged with um, lore and stuff, uh, less expensive stuff, stuff that doesn't cost forty five dollars USD. Um, if it's if it's packaged with lower end stuff, then that's perfectly fine, no problems. Um, so yeah, uh, lots of interesting news there. G really happy to hear that the vocals stuff is actually going forward and getting done. Uh, look forward to more news in the future and actual organized play, please. Um, yeah, I think that is it. We actually only hit six minutes. We did not hit ten. Can't get that extra ad revenue. <laughs> okay, that's it. See you guys later. This is Hunter Search, signing off.